Hey everyone, Sarah here. Sorry for a little bit of the late start. Um, I uh, had some computer issues. So uh, today we are going to be doing watercolor and uh, we are doing, we're going to continue the theme from yesterday. We did a rowboat in drawing class and today there is technically a boat. It is mostly a landscape, but there's technically a boat in the reference photo. So I'm going to pull the reference photo up so you can see what we're doing today. All right, so you can see that we've got, um, see there is a boat there. I didn't lie about that, but uh, mostly it's a landscape, you know. So we still have the, the uh, cattails, which we had yesterday in drawing, um, and there's some water. But other than that, this is kind of its own thing. I just mostly wanted to stick with the theme. If you would like to see this, um, if you look here, at the bottom of my screen, there's a, a, an address there that will take you to my Discord server and reference photos are posted there. Um, you could, there's also a button below for Discord and that will take you there as well. Every, everyone is welcome to join. So, um, you know, please, please head out there and take a look. Okay. So, uh, first what we're going to be doing, I want to go over the supplies that we're going to use today. I want to tell you, if you've got a kit like this, this is perfectly fine. Like there, there's nothing wrong with using this. Um, this is Crayola, I think is the brand of this one, but you know, there's different brands, but it's, it's fine to use pots. I use, uh, tubes. Hold on. Let me get these out. I use tubes, but you can re you can let these dry like if you put these in here and you can let them dry and reconstitute them and then they're basically the same thing as this so there's nothing wrong absolutely not with using something like this the main thing to keep in mind is that my colors may differ slightly from yours for example so I have a red yellow blue uh, which are your primary colors but notice that I have two blues I've got a warm blue which is thalo and a cool blue, which is ultramarine. Um, I also have a brown. Here's the thing though. So my colors in here, I'm going to open this. My colors in here, I've got a red, I've got a yellow, I've got a blue, but notice I only have one blue. So you see up here how I've got two different blues. This one is the original. This is the color blue. It's very warm. Like you can actually hold these up to it and see very warm. This one, I cooled it down with a little bit of purple because that's the main difference. So you can see that I cooled it down. Sometimes you need the cooler color. So what you can do is you just test to see how warm it is. Notice this has a little bit more yellow in it. So it's more of an aqua color. Whereas this one is more of a royal blue. That means that it's got more purple in it. Um, this one has more yellow in it or more green rather. So that's the difference. So it's just a matter of, of determining your colors are the same as mine so that you end up getting the same um, outcome. Okay, so that's that. So you can use that, no problem. Um, I also have here a palette knife. You don't necessarily need this. I like to mix colors because we're using such small amounts of colors. I usually mix it with my brush. So we, we don't really need that, but you can have it if you, if you don't wanna mix with your brush. Um, also, I have a pencil because normally with watercolor, we draw out, like we sketch out uh, what we're going to be painting first. And um, it today we're not going to be doing that because we're going to be doing kind of a free form. But usually you want to sketch things out first because uh, the watercolor you can't really paint over it if you paint over it it's just going to add to whatever the color was below so uh, which you'll find today because we're going to be doing some mixing of colors um so it's good to plan out first but today we're just going to be doing free form so we don't need the pencil today teacher margo says molly wants me to tell you hi hi tell her i said hi and that i'll be seeing her tonight hopefully read some harry potter um, one of my favorite books. So, um, 
Uh, okay, so I told you about my color, so I'm gonna just move those off. I've got a palette, nine by 12 watercolor, and I just use cold press um, from the store. It's just like a, uh, like a craft store. Um, it's just a, a book of color, and I'm, I already have a sheet taken out. I have two brushes. Now this is a wash brush, three quarter inch wash brush. Also, you could use a size 10 or 12 filbert. All filbert means is that it's flat. It's a flat brush that's been rounded at the top. Hi, how are you doing? Falco y YT, am I saying that correctly? Hopefully I am. Um, welcome to the stream. Good to see you back. Um, this is a round brush and I'm using a size six. So this is the, the, what we'll be using for more detail. Okay, got some water because of course it is watercolor. And I've got a paper towel. Now notice I also put some paper down on my desk because watercolor, while it can be cleaned up, it can stain. And my particular desk has like a wood grain and it can get down in the grain. So um, I put paper down to like catch that so that it doesn't go through. Okay. So um, I did want to show you something that I've been working on. So I do my own art projects, of course. And I have been doing some coffee. I showed you guys, I think, uh, oh, where is it? I showed you guys this in my last watercolor class, I believe. So this is a vulture, you can see. This is my own, you know, thing. Um, this is using coffee. So I actually painted this with coffee, but it looks a lot like watercolor and coffee actually acts like watercolor. So what I do to get a coffee paint is you make like instant coffee or something like that. Um, don't use expensive coffee, use cheap stuff. Um, and you, reduce it meaning you let it thicken a little bit like you know so so you can like leave it out um overnight or something like that um or just cook it a little bit like heat it up a little bit more and um then you can make different strengths by like mixing a little bit of water with it and that's how you that's how i got all of this so what i did here is i we're going to be doing this technique actually you paint you wet it first like you get everything wet and then you drop uh color like where you want it to go it's pretty fun so I've been working on that. Well, I did not have any coffee made yesterday, but I wanted to work on a piece. So I'm doing a self-portrait. And so <clears throat> what I did is I took watercolor and mixed it. This is, this is the color. Mixed it to be a similar color to this. Now it's a little different. I, I'm not, I didn't get it 100%. This definitely is a richer, more brown color. So I may come in with like a little bit more brown in this. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that like you can sometimes mix watercolors to look a certain way. So, all right. Let's get started. So, first of all, we're in the portrait position, meaning that we're vertical rather than horizontal. And the main reason for this is because um, since more people are on, I'm going to bring up the Discord window again just so you guys can see the reference photo. Again, if you want to go there, there's the Discord button or you can type in this link here. Um, but let's take a look at what we're doing. So this is, this is our um, reference photo for today. Notice that there's like a good deal of mountains going off in the background. So that is why we are doing a even though it's a landscape, we're using portrait uh, orientation. Okay, let's get started. So first we're going to make the sky. So I'm only gonna come down about a third. So if you, you think like, you know, um, here's a half. So like a third, you know. So we're only gonna come down to about here. I'm gonna go ahead and get water. We're gonna just wet the whole thing. And if you can't see where the water is, if you look at it, from like a, here I'll do, I'll do what you can see. If you look at it from an angle, you'll notice that there is a uh, shininess and that's how you know where your water is. Sometimes you can tint the water a little bit. Like if I wanted to, um, I know I'm gonna be doing a blue, so I could tint the water with a slight bit of blue just so I can see where it is. But I have plenty of light here so I can actually see. All right, so I think to about there is good. And see if you hold it at an angle. 
See, you can kind of see it. You can see the line there. Okay, so um, we are wetting the paper. Um, we're going to mix a little bit of ultramarine blue, so that's the cool blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of this in my palette. If you are using this kind of watercolor, remember that you just need to mix a little bit of purple with it. And what you can do is you can take, you know, get, get a lot of water in there and just like keep picking it up with your brush, you know, just, you know, keep picking it up and bringing it over so you get a, a decent amount of paint. Then get a lot of water in your purple and bring a little bit of that over and mix it until you get that royal blue, that kind of peacock royal blue. Well, actually, this is probably more peacock blue, but you get what I mean, royal blue. All right. So um, we are going to get a little bit of this blue. So all I'm going to do is I'm brushing the water. See, notice that it's clean water. I'm just brushing it on the side. I'm not actually touching the paint. I'm just kind of tilting my brush against this rim here. Then once I get a decent amount of water in there, I'm going to start agitating. And you don't actually have to touch the paint. You just start agitating. And that is going to, you want, it, you want to go until it's opaque, but it's going to get paint. Basically, you're watering down the paint, but leaving a little bit at the bottom. Because we don't need it to be fully mixed. If it was fully mixed, it would be very dark. And we don't need it to, we, we still want it to be watercolory, which means it's see-through. But as soon as we can't really see it much anymore, we can't see that thing. I can still see it. Come on. The first time takes a little bit of time sometimes. All right, that's better. So I'm just brushing it on. Now notice how light that is. Oops, I must have accidentally touched it a little bit. That's okay. Now if you have just clean water on here, it's gonna move around differently. So mine had dried a little bit. I'm gonna actually set that down. But see how what I was saying earlier where if you tint it blue just a little bit, you can actually see where everything is. So now I can see. I mean, it's very light, but I can still see. You're gonna notice too that your um, sheet starts to buckle and that's okay. Well, you can flatten it later. Once everything's dry, you just put it between some heavy books or something like that and it'll, it'll dry flat. I mean, you want it to already be dry. It'll flatten itself out. That's what I meant to say. Okay, um, so I'm going to, I've got a good, decent amount of water down. I want this top part of the sky to be a little darker. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the color. With watercolor, it is additive, which means that the more you add on to it, the darker it's going to get. Kind of like, you know, if you were using colored pencil, man, I am getting water all over the place. And, and even though I have paper down, I don't want it to go through the paper. So I'm just going to sop some of this up. Um, like with colored pencil, you know, you maybe draw lightly the first time. And then the second time you go over it again, it makes it darker. It's a little like that. Where, where you, every time you add a layer, it adds on to it. Okay. If you're just joining the stream, we just got started. We just painted some water on the top and now we're adding a little bit of color to that water. Now, leaving it a little choppy like this is fine because it's gonna give it the appearance of clouds. So um, I don't mind, you know, leaving it like that. Um, Let's see, I think at the very top, so I'm gonna let myself touch the paint just a little bit. And at the very top, I'm gonna to just draw my brush across and watch what it does. It just starts to flow and you can add a little bit more water if you wanna watch it do that some more. Like I'm just touching the water to it and it's actually it's actually doing its own thing. All 
All right, so then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do this bottom part of the sky. I want, let's see. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of water to this because I don't want these to be quite so dark. Now why the, while this is still wet, we want it to still be wet. So I'm trying not to let it dry too much. I'll just re-wet it here. Um, we're gonna make a tiny bit of orange. So I'm gonna take some yellow. I'm gonna make them their own pots. So I'm not mixing them in the same one just yet because that way then we can reuse these colors. So I'm gonna put some yellow in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of my red. All right, we're gonna do the exact same thing by adding water like I did with the blue. You take the water and just brush the side of the pot. You don't have to actually touch the paint directly. You can see the red's already trying to mix. Just brush the side, you're not touching the paint directly. Just hitting that rim so that the water goes down into it. And then you just agitate and you don't have to touch the paint directly. now this so I'm doing the same thing that I did but now with the red water I dip my brush in come over here and just wipe it on the side and that's gonna get some of that in there okay I'm wiping off my brush so that I don't contaminate my yellow and I'm gonna do the same thing with the yellow I'm gonna agitate it a little bit and then I'm gonna come over here and just brush it now I want this to be a pretty pale orange, so I'm gonna allow there to be a decent amount of yellow. You have to add more water, you can, just remember to re-agitate. Okay, now I'm gonna mix this and see. That's pretty good. Uh, I want it to be more yellow though. So I'm wiping off my brush so I don't contaminate my yellow. I'm just gonna add some more. So all I'm doing is just wiping the yellow on the side. All right, that's nice. That's a nice pale orange. So I might add a little, even a little bit more water to it. So all we're doing is coming in here and since it's still wet, it should mix with the blue. And so what we are gonna get a little bit of the mixing and orange plus blue equals kind of a brownish grayish color. And that's okay. Just letting everything kind of blend together. Now, 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 what we're gonna do is we're going to make a grayish color for the clouds. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some brown. We're gonna mix brown with a tiny bit of blue. How does this make gray, you ask? Well, so brown is already on its way to gray. Uh, brown is just basically a warm gray. And I know that that sounds funny, but um, to make brown, you mix um, two complementary colors. So your complementary colors are one color plus the other two primary colors. So for example, blue plus orange, which is red and yellow, equals brown. Yellow plus purple, which is red plus blue, equals brown. Red plus green, which is yellow plus blue, equals brown. So, so basically, if you mix all three of your primary colors, you get brown. 
Now, uh, that being said, if you mix it just slightly more with one of the warmer colors, or if one of your colors is warm, you're going to get more of a brown color. If you mix more cooler, like so, you, so you're more on like the blue side, for example, um, blue and red. So more on the blue and red side is going to give you gray. More on the red and yellow side is going to give you brown. So there you go. There you go. That being said, what you can do is you can take brown and mix it with purple and you get black. But it's really just a dark, dark gray. Okay, so I'm going to, I don't wanna mix this directly in here. So I'm gonna just bring a little bit of this over here cause I don't wanna lose my orange yet. And then I'm going to get a little bit more blue. Need to add some water to that. In the meantime, this has been drying a little bit and that's okay. Cause I actually had quite a bit of water on there. And if you ever need to sop up water, you just use your paper towel and just touch it directly to the, the canvas or the uh, paper. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if I need to sop up water. I'm, I may. Let's do this. Let's say I want clouds here. So I'm going to go ahead and just sop this up here. I'm going to hold it closer so you can see. But see how like it's whiter there where I sopped it up? Just makes it a little, I'm going to have one kind of coming off the page. Uh, let's see. I don't, I don't know. I'm just putting clouds in. I'm just putting clouds in wherever. So I'm sopping it up in those areas. Now I'm going to mix my gray by getting a little bit of blue and putting it in this, in the brown. Look at that. Main gray. I can maybe get a little bit more blue. There you go. So what I'm going to do is come in here. And just go in those areas that I, that I sopped up. And it is going to blend a little bit with the other colors in the background, but that's okay. Cause when it dries, it will dry its own in its own area. We'll, we'll just let that dry. Flux, hey, welcome to the stream. We are doing watercolor today. What are you working on? I'm gonna just sop this up a little bit. Just drawing, cool, well, just drawing. <laughs> Are you ever really just drawing? Your stuff's pretty, pretty amazing. Okay. So, um, I'm going to finish using, well, when you're done, if you, if you get any finished, you know, post them. I love seeing your work. So that's another thing, guys, you know, I mentioned that my reference photos are here at, um, in ArtShare on my Discord server. Uh, but you can also share your artwork or if you follow along with me, you can, you can share that as well. And, um, I highly encourage that because I love to see your work and see what you're doing. Okay. Now, um, let's see. I'm looking, this is pretty wet right now. You can like do cool stuff with it. You can like move it around. Like, look, watch, see how it's moving around. You can like do cool stuff and like really make it look interesting. But we do need it to be a little bit dry. I don't use hair dryer usually with watercolor because the cool thing about watercolor is that it dries in these really interesting ways. Like, okay, this, I showed you this before. Now, granted, this is coffee, but coffee acts just like watercolor. 
But see how like it dried with the edges like that? And you get these like interesting splotches. You know, that was like where some coffee dropped. Um, you can't make that up. That is like, it's just serendipity, right? So I wet only this area, yes, and I put coffee just in this area, but the way it dried was totally on its own. And if I had used a hair dryer or something to dry it, I wouldn't have gotten like all these interesting little, you know, little, little dots and, and uh, you know, it would have dried very evenly. So you definitely want, um, you definitely want to let it dry naturally. And of course that's hard because, you know, you want to keep moving, but we're going to go ahead and, and um, we'll just mix up our next color and that will help. Okay. So, but we, we do want this to be dry. All right, so our first layer of mountains. So we're gonna actually use um, our red and our uh, ultramarine blue. And we wanna get kind of a grayish color. I'm gonna actually sop up, I think we're done with this orange. So I'm just gonna soak this up. We don't need it. So that we can use the, the middle area Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some water here in the middle. And we'll get a little bit of blue. So we're making a light purple color. We don't want this to be too dark. And I'm gonna get a little bit of red. And I think I picked up too much red on my, so. Yeah, I sure did. Look at that, look how pink that is, okay. Let's get a little more blue. We want this to be a nice purpley color. That's pretty good. Maybe a little more blue. There we go. All right, but we want this to be relatively light. And so how you make colors light in watercolor is just add more water. Just add more water, that's it. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's see how dry this is. This is still pretty wet. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have some options here. Since we're gonna be painting over them, what I can do is I can go where I want the mountains to be and just dry that area. So I'm just gonna go in the shape of the mountains I want in the background. So I'm gonna have a peak there. Okay. So I just dried everything where I want this to go. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and get the purple down. Now what we're going to do is work in layers. Now I'm starting at the bottom because uh, I don't want to get too close. I'm looking because it will bleed into the other color a little bit, which might not be that big of a deal. I mean, maybe we want our mountains in the background to look kind of like they're, they're bleeding into the background. I mean, that, that might look cool, but it wasn't the intention of the original painting. So, you know, maybe we won't do that. It's up to you. All right, this is very light and this is not a problem. Uh, we actually want it to be light, like I said. We can add more color, so I'm just adding more color in the peaks. And it's going to dry in an interesting way. Now what I think I'm going to do, because we really need this whole area to be pretty dry, so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to mix the color for the lake and we're going to do the lake so that this gives us time a little bit to time to dry. All right. So let's see. I don't want to do the whole lake. Hmm. Let's do, because we need the mountains to come down to the lake and we want them to be white. All right. So let's do kind of a mix of our thalo blue and our um, ultramarine blue. So let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead over here because that color was dried up. I'm going to go ahead and put my phthalo blue there. Remember watercolor can be reconstituted with water so you can let it dry and uh, just reuse the palette. You don't have to, um, you don't have to clean your watercolors out. So I'm adding my water and then I'm going to agitate. Now look at the difference between this blue and that blue. Pretty interesting, right? This definitely has more yellow in it. It's more of an aqua color. So I'm going to mix the two blues. I'm going to bring it to the middle here. Whew, there's like a little fly or something that's bu bugging me. Quit bugging me, bug. I try to be a little careful with um, when I'm pulling my brush out because what happens is sometimes it will drop, like I did actually drop right next to um, my painting, but it'll drop water on there and then you'll have like a big water splotch. And everybody's pretty quiet today. I like that. That means you're focused. Focused. All right. So I'm going to get a little bit more water in this blue. And then we're going to start. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure I want to start the water just yet. I really just want my top to be dry. Oops, I did actually drop a little bit of paint. You're definitely not focused. <laughs> well, I guess we get focused. I tell you what. All right, so this is still pretty wet. Hmm. I don't know. I, I do not want to use a hairdryer. Like I said, I already explained why I don't use hairdryer. But man, I don't know. All right. Let's do this. We'll go ahead and mix our next purple. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Crixano. I, you know, I get headaches sometimes and, you know, I'll, I'll take a um, ibuprofen or something like that. You know, it's probably the quickest way to get rid of a headache, but there are some, like if you do stress reducing exercises, um, like a, like a guided meditation or something like that, that actually can help headaches quite a bit. And it seems counterintuitive because basically what you're doing is you want to focus on your headache. Like you want to actually sit there and concentrate on the pain and think about the pain and that is it. You don't want to think about anything else. You close your eyes and just think about the pain and just really focus on it, doing deep breathing while you're thinking about the pain. And it's not that it makes it go away, but it will 
it helps remove you from the pain like that that's called witnessing or mindfulness and um, it helps remove you from the pain and when you do that and you disconnect from it it actually helps you kind of control how much the pain bothers you so it will still hurt it just won't bother you anymore I it's hard to explain you just have to try it you just have to try it but it, it really works um, I do teach mindfulness classes on pretty late it's a uh, midnight Eastern time um, so for those of you who are say like in the UK or something you know if you're in Europe then um, you it would be probably be too late because it'd be like four in the morning or something or, or two, yeah <laughs> two. four or five in the morning so pretty late but, um, you know, I just realized I mixed in the wrong blue. That's okay. We'll, we'll just have some, the next set of mountains is just going to be a little bit more, uh, warm. Um, but I do restorative yoga, which, um, I affectionately call lazy yoga because the whole point is not to work. It's not like regular yoga. And then I do those on Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific time. And then I do guided meditations, which usually are only about five, 10 minutes long. They're not super long on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific. So if you're interested, you can check out my VODs. Um, just so you know, I just started doing this. So if you do check out my VODs, my uh, VODs give me like a, a, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt because I'm just starting out doing this. So I, I'm not used to the streaming method. I've done them live, but I'm not used to streaming. And so there's, there's a lot of getting used to the fact that I'm streaming. Things like abruptly cutting off my video, you know, well, that kind of ruins your meditation, right? You know, I've got music playing in the background and stuff. And so, uh, you know, things like that. I'm trying to, I'm learning, I'm learning. So like I said, grade me on a curve for my first couple classes. <laughs> it will get better, I promise. I'm improving every day. Okay. Um, so this is very, I'm gonna add a little more red because this is pretty blue. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and adding another set of mountains. Now, it is still a little wet underneath. So what I am not doing is I'm not trying to push it up. You know, I want it to be like its own row, but it is going to automatically kind of spread a little bit on its own. Okay, now I want some of the peaks to come up a little higher than the, the ones behind it. And I'm just kind of dabbing the color on. Needless to say, Crixano, uh, I hope your headache feels better. That is a major bummer. Headaches are not cool. Now these look really amorphous right now, but they are gonna actually dry like this one did, like with the, the edges. It's going to dry like with edges like that. The, the color kind of moves to the edges. So we actually want uh, 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 sorry, I lost my train of thought. We, we actually want there to be separate edges from everything. Now my ones in the background might be too light. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Crixano says, of course you'll get better. I wouldn't assume you wouldn't because I believe in you and will continue to support you. Oh, thank you so much. That is really sweet. Thank you. I really appreciate that, Crixano. Man, that was nice. That made my day. Thank you. All right. So in the meantime, we do still have, uh, we do still have like the, this, 
area here below. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to actually pick up some of this paint with my brush. So it's wet. So I'm taking up some of the paint. And what we're going to do is blend it. So I'm just coming in. You can get a little bit of water if you need to. Right at the edge. Okay, this is going to actually help too. We can, we can like actually sop some of it up and hopefully this will help it dry as well. There. Okay, um, we have at least one more layer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more blue. and a little bit more red. I actually, you know what? I want to use my I want to use my uh, round brush. Okay. So let's do I'm just doing this purple in the foreground. This is a darker, you know, because I just added a little bit of color to it. I want this to dry soon so you can see it. It usually dries pretty quickly. I think I just had too much water on the sky. I think that was the deal. And that happens. Ooh, excuse me. So I'm just dabbing this on because it's still wet underneath. So I'm just dabbing it on, letting letting it have some peaks and valleys. Don't worry about down here. What we'll do is we'll add a little bit of water and just let it blend. I'm going to bring this a little farther down. Add a little water and just bring this a little farther down. I think this is the key. I think I maybe I should use a smaller brush for the mountains. Even though they are mountains and normally mountains I do use the bigger brush. I think in this particular case maybe maybe it's warranted to use the round brush. Okay. So I'm bringing it down a little bit. Not too far because we still need there to be like some there's going to be an area where it goes behind. We can come in and crisp this up later too, because right now this looking this is looking really amorphous. Okay. Now we need to do some mountains in the front. Let's see, how am I going to do this? So I might come in here. I'm going to put some right here. Doesn't look like it, but I promise you that it's going to dry in like really interesting ways. So now we're actually coming down and we're going to leave. See this little pocket of white? We're going to leave that there. I just touched a little bit of blue to this. 
And we're gonna we're gonna play with this a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna let the blue kind of blend. We're gonna make it look a little bit different than the mountains behind it. So I'm gonna touch a little bit of blue here. As mountains get closer, they're going to um, be darker in appearance. So that's what I'm playing with right now. So I'm just putting some clean water down here. And letting it blend. Now I want to do some over here, some little mountains here. These are just kind of like little uh, little side peaks. There's a kind of, like I said, there's like a little valley in here. And again, we'll add some clean water below. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm liking it. Hopefully you're liking the way yours is looking. Again, it's spreading, you know, it's doing funky stuff. We can clean that up later. Hmm. All right, now I wanna add this blue. So here's what I'm going to do. I would like to, I'm going to add some water down here and we're going to start at the very bottom. We're going to start at the bottom and just get our paper wet. Just like we did the sky. Now be careful when you come up to the purple. I'm going to just go right up to it and try not to touch it too much because it's still a little wet and it will bleed. I'm gonna go ahead and touch some of my blue down here. Now remember, I mixed my two blues, so this should be a little different than the sky. Notice this is a little warmer color than the sky because I mixed a little bit of the warm blue with the cool blue. In the sky, we only use cool blue. So I'm just letting this kind of be choppy. I'm not, I'm not trying to make it straight. Let me move that water out of the way. Now let's see how dry everything is up here. I'm looking up here. But see, look, this edge here, look, this is already starting to dry with like an interesting edge. This is starting to dry with an interesting edge. Now the reason it's doing that right there is because um, it was a dry part and these are in the wet part. So it's just gonna take these a little bit longer. All right, so up here, I'm going to get really close, not touch. I just found out recently, there's a cool little term that you can uh, use. It has to do more with like, you know, being friendly with your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, but it's called leaving room for Jesus. 
And uh, I think that's a pretty, pretty fun term there. So that's what we're doing. We're leaving room for Jesus here. Right up there. Just, just a little bit, but enough to where, uh, you know, the colors aren't blending together. We don't want that. We do not want that. Keep it clean, y'all. Keep it clean. Okay, now here's the tricky bit. And in fact, you know what? I'm not even going to use this brush. I'm going to use my smaller brush because we're, we're getting up into the area where, uh, you know, we, we need to be kind of careful. So, again, remember, leave room for Jesus. We got to... We don't want all of our paint colors touching here. So just be very slow and cautious about it. There we go. Okay. Now here, I don't like that it's tilting. Well, no, that's okay. We're going to leave it like that. I, it's coming down a little bit, and I don't necessarily like that, but it actually looks fine. I mean, because that might actually be realistic that you have, like, you know, some natural curvature to the, uh, to the side of the mountain. So we'll leave that. We'll leave that. All right. Um, I'm going to just use up the rest of my blue here. Uh, with my big brush and just brush in some areas just to make it look more interesting and layered. You know, like it makes it look a little choppy. And that's it, just to use it up. Now, things are starting to dry up at the top. I mean, it's still pretty wet though. I'm, frankly, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that it's, I mean, part of my sky is still wet. What is up? I don't know. You know what? I bet you, I bet you I know. It's actually really muggy right now. I'm in Florida and um, it's really muggy and watercolor actually takes a lot longer to dry in, in like very humid weather. And it is very humid. I mean, I'm like feeling sweaty, you know, uh, so that's probably it. That's probably what it is. So we're not going to mess with the mountains anymore for now. Um, I'm going to just sop up the rest of the, the rest of that. Um, we're going to go ahead. This is, this down here is drying. Okay. It's just up here where it's really having a problem. So I probably just started out with like just a little bit too much, um, water to begin with. And that's fine. We'll fix that. We will fix that. All right. So um, let's do this. We want to get our boat in here. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to mix the, a dark color again. We're going to mix some of our phthalo blue. Pretty pure color. I'm not going to mix too much water with it. And our burnt umber. We're going to make that dark gray again. That is still blue. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit of red. Not much, but just a tiny bit. That should, let's see, I'm just going to paint right here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty gray. All right. I mean, it's, it's still like kind of a greenish color, but that's okay. Don't mind. Don't mind. Uh, so first thing we're going to do, uh, we can sketch out our boat if we want. I'm not. I'm just going to paint it on there. 
it should be dry. You want to make sure it's totally dry for this part, including the mountains. Okay. So pick up a little bit of color. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make our boat shape. So the boat, just like a little line, like that. And then we're going to come down at an angle in the front and in the back. There. Maybe even let it come a little forward in the front. I'm going to let mine be a little curved. There we go. Just a little boat. Not much. All right. Then we want two little people coming up from that. So I'm going to do a little dot. This dot is a little bigger. You know, maybe it's a father and son or mother and daughter or father and daughter or whatever, you know, whatever. So one's a little taller. It could just be two differently shaped adults. That's possible. And then you just do a little triangle coming down from the that from that circle. This circle is going to have little points in the front because he's wearing a hat. So I just, all I did was I just added little points to either side. That's it. make my boat a little longer. All right, then we are going to, we've got uh, coming out the back and you want to be very careful. We're just going to dot a little line coming down. That's the oar. And then in the front, we're just, I'm just dotting. All I'm doing is little tiny dots. And then I'm going to do a little swoosh, swoosh, like that. So I just very lightly, I mean, all I did was barely touch. So if you need to practice that, I always practice on my hand. Just take a clean brush and practice your different strokes. So that's like a hard stroke, light stroke, and get used to what it feels like. You want it to barely be touching, like just a little tickle. That's what I used to tell my kids uh, when I was teaching watercolor to like eight and nine year olds. Like just a little tickle. So I'd have them try it on their hand first with a clean brush so that you can get used to feeling how hard you should be pushing down. You should not be pushing down at all. Like you should barely feel it. Okay. Now we're going to do, we're going to use the same color and we are going to do our uh, grasses and everything in the front. So I've got, I'm going to start a little to the right of the middle and just do kind of a little hilly corner. And we're going to fill this in. Notice that it's not dark yet. It's, it's pretty light. That will change because we're going to add to it. But I actually wouldn't mind too much if it was like that. I think that looks pretty cool. Now, my paper is kind of uh, going up at an angle and I don't want that. So I'm just going to take a little ruler and just set it on the corner there because otherwise then all of my paint's going to go up towards the top, which actually might not be bad. It's kind of looking cool. 
So maybe, maybe I could let that happen, but I don't want it to like start dripping into my lake. So I'm just gonna hold this corner down. All right, then I'm going to do some grasses. So uh, we're just gonna have a line. And again, this is your tickle pressure. You don't want, you don't want much. You wanna go different directions with your grasses and you can have different thicknesses. Different heights. Like see, so you notice I'm crossing a little bit. And some of these are gonna have like it's gonna be a little thicker down at the bottom. So I'm just filling in with like a little bit more of that color and it's gonna seep up into the grasses. Okay, so let's do our cattails. So first I'm gonna just do some grasses that come straight off the page. So just kind of crisscrossy grasses, not, you know, they're just coming off the page. I'm not gonna go all the way over. Okay, then I might need to mix a little bit more color. I'm going to do some tall grasses. I'm gonna do one there. I'll do one here, one here, there, and there. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make it a little thicker towards the top. And that is my cattail, like that. So all I'm doing is just dabbing. This little cattail here is gonna be just a little smaller. I'm just dabbing the paint on there just to get the general shape. I'm almost out of this color, so I'm hoping it lasts. I mean, I can mix more, but you know, trying to trying to make it last so I don't have to mix anymore. And cattails have like that little little part that comes out of the top. These are pretty lumpy cattails. Uh, you know what, that's okay though. I mean, think about watercolor. Watercolor, you want it to be kind of loose and lumpy and you know, so that's all right. I am gonna be fixing these mountains though, which are still not 100% dry, but they're much drier than they were. This might actually work out in our favor because um, the, the, we want it to have like kind of a foggy look I would say that's definitely a foggy look. So, all right. I'm actually gonna mix a little bit more of this color because I want it to be darker here. So all I did, it was brown and blue. Brown and blue with a little bit of red, remember? I just added just that little bit of red. You can paint it there, great, great. And then I'm just gonna come in and go over my lines a little bit. And actually what this does is it adds some more layers so it makes it look even more interesting. Even more. 
I'm going to touch it to these cat of nine tails so that we get the same color in there. I'll touch it over here. Oops, I just realized my, my ruler came off and wasn't holding it anymore. Not okay. So I'm doing the same thing over here, just kind of coming in and doing some darker. I'm not doing all of them. And what that's going to do is it's going to end up making it look layered. And it's going to look like some grasses are farther away. Cat of nine tails. I think these are just called cat tails. I feel like maybe cat of nine tails is something different. Uh, I believe that is a, the name of a whip, a type of whip that has the, the it has those, it has knots on the ends of it. So, all right. Oh, I said cat of nine tails. I thought I said cat tails. Sorry if I said that. I, I my mistake. I meant to say just cat tails. All right, let's, let's take a look at these mountains. Let's do something about these mountains. It's still not totally dry. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a new paper towel. We're just going to completely dab this area up at the top. I need it to be dry. I mean, it's, it's pretty dry, but it's got a, it still has like a little dampness to it. See, there was still a little, a little bit came up. All right. Oops. All right, I can probably take that up now. Okay, so let's deal with the purple. I'm gonna take a drink of water. It, it really is because it's humid. I'm pretty sure that's why it's having so much trouble drying. So yours might actually not be a problem, but this is what I want it to look like. This area here, that's what I want it to look like. So we're going to, I'm going to actually mix a little bit more of this blue in here. I liked that blue. I liked that blue. There we go. And I'm going to just let a line come. And I'm following the same line that I did before. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring it on down, even though this side, this part down here looks fine. I'm going to bring it on down so that it's all blended. And then we'll just, we'll get some clean water and just let that water flow everything down. Okay. All right, let's do the same for over here. Oops, and just be careful. You don't want to touch your wet area. I just accidentally touched this area down here. So let's see, we've got, we've got some mountains here. So I'm just putting some clean water, again, same thing as we did before, down here, and just let it bleed into it. All right. Over here, 
I left a little bit too much room for Jesus, so I'm going to come in and just kind of close that gap with, with my brush. There we go. Okay. Already starting to look better. Already. I'm adding a little bit of extra, extra uh, paint up here so it'll dry darker. All right, now for the mountains in the back, what are we going to do about them? I'm gonna actually let these ones over here stay light. Like I might do like this top part over here, but I'm gonna let these stay light because they, they don't, um, they're recessed back a little bit. Okay. All I'm doing right now is just manipulating the gradient. Okay, so these in the background, I want to be a little lighter. So I'm gonna add some water to this, the color that I already had. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add my peaks. Same thing, but this time because it's dry, it's not doing the spreading thing as much. Now we wanna make sure we don't touch these uh, peaks that we just did. Not even room for Jesus, like we don't even wanna get close. And that is because it is there is a lot of water going on there and it will, the room for Jesus even, like it needs to be at least a little bit dry. And it's not even close to a little bit dry. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Flex, still here with doodling and shade practice was focused. Oh, I love it. I love to hear that you were focused. That's key. Focus means you're being mindful you're being mindful about your work and you're, you're letting yourself get into your work and zoning. I like that. All right. Remember, not even room for Jesus. We're, we're not even getting close. Yeah, that's, I'm liking how that's looking. This is great. All right, we can't do the ones in the background just yet, but let's go ahead and add some water to our purple because it's gonna be a little lighter. And we're just gonna wait a minute. Just gonna wait a minute. Maybe, no, I don't even wanna risk it. I was going to say maybe we could do a couple of the peaks, but I really just don't want to risk it. So we're going to actually just take a little break. We can chat. Oh, you know what? You know what we need to do? Sorry, I didn't even think about it. Let's add some water to this. Um, if you have any of this like dark color left, add a little bit of water to it. We got to do a reflection. Totally forgot. So all we're going to do is come in the water here. Do kind of two, two figures. And that's it. We're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mess with it too terribly much. Let's see, I might have this come forward just a little bit.
There we go. All right, we're just gonna leave it, but it does not need to be perfect. We just wanna indicate that there is, there is a reflection in the water. Now the mountains don't have a reflection, uh, and that is because, I don't know why, <laughs> actually. Crixano, sorry I wasn't following along today. I still haven't found my brushes. Uh, I've been crocheting and I might have started knitting even though you told me to stick with crochet for now. I couldn't help myself. No, nope, that's fine. If you figure out how to knit, that's fine. Eventually I'll be teaching knitting on um, my crochet stream. Uh, but you know, if you wanted to start now, that's not a problem. I like that you're interested. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing a little bit of that, of our light color that's gonna be a little darker and I wanna just come in here right at the top and just get a little bit more color. I, I need to be careful when I get over here because this is still wet. My my uh, little reflection that I did is still wet. But yeah, it's always fine if you don't follow along. You know, the thing is, is you still learn things through osmosis. I call it atmospheric learning. You know, you still learn just by having an atmosphere of learning about you. And, um, you know, just being in the presence of learning. I think is important. So we're making this darker as it goes in the back because that's what happens. It looks darker. just add some areas here where it's just darker in different places maybe now I'm just gonna add water and just kind of move it around yes I agree at least when you're able to have an atmosphere of learning yep absolutely just you know just just being around learning it's good um, and being around other people doing the things that you want to do, you know, observing, watching it, you know, like I don't, I don't know how to program just yet, you know, I'm learning, but, um, in the meantime, I still watch people program, even though I don't fully understand what it is they're doing, because you just observe people that are doing what it is you want to do. And I want to program. So I'm watching people program. All right. I'm just bringing this color down here a little bit. And now this is pretty dry, so I can come right up to it. Still leave room for Jesus, like I said. You don't, you don't want it to be completely touching. We're just friends here, that's all we are. Just friends. All right. I think, let me look. Oh, our background mountains are just still really wet. So, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I have my lighter purple. I'm just gonna come in and just do some peaks. I'm not gonna actually paint down too much. Just some peaks. I'm not getting close to my mountains. This is key. This is very key. Just making some peaks because it's still not dry and I curse the humidity, but it's really, that's about all I can do because I refuse to use a hair dryer. 
that will just ruin the painting in my opinion. I'm not even going to bother with my back, my back, back mountains. We'll just, uh, am I going to do the birds? Oh yeah, there are birds in there. Yeah, I guess I do. I guess I do need to do the birds, huh? All right. I'll do the birds. I will do the birds. Okay. So notice that there's some dark bits in here. All that is, is just the paper where um, I've just been working it too much. So you can just pick those up. You can rub them off later. Whatever you want to do. Like you don't have to get them right away. Okay. So for the birds, the birds are in the sky. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to mix a little bit of our phthalo blue, which I already have some there, with the brown. I'm going to dry off my brush, pick up a little bit, and then we're just going to do our little, um, the, the shape you're going to do is like this, like kind of a, an M, but just very small. Barely more than just like a, a squiggly line. All right, and all I'm doing is gently, where I just put the paint, I'm just touching more paint to that area, and that will make them dry a little darker. Know how I'm feeling right now about this whole area down here but you know it's all right you can always come in hold on let's get this wet right here And you just dab and that just gives it that kind of atmospheric effect. There. Like that. I really did a number with the water up here. I think I just got it too wet to begin with, so you know, it happens. It happens. Ah, oh, good night, Flux. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Have a good evening. Sleep tight. All right. I think I'm done. I don't know how everybody else is doing, but I think I'm done. Um, I'm not going to mess with the mountains anymore. I'm just going to let it dry. They should dry in, like, interesting ways. Um... So, all right, what did I learn from this? The first thing I learned is that uh, not to get it too wet in the sky. <laughs> that was the very first thing. Um, or I just need to spend more time letting it dry before I move on. Uh, because these little bits here of paper, that's really from just it being wet and manipulated too much. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, um, I like my little boat and my reflection, which I can barely see. So I'm going to just add a little bit more of my reflection. That's a little dark, so I'm just going to add some water. Dry my brush, and I'll pick some of that up. There. There.
Um, so that was an easy fix. Down here, I might make this a little darker. You know, I might come in and do like another layer of, of dark since I already have some color mixed up here. Why not? Why not? Maybe a little extra over here too. Discord is saying, I don't have permission to send messages. You can't post your art. Hmm. Hold on. Let me pull it up and see. Are you trying to post your art in ArtCrit? Cause there's like a couple different uh, there's a couple different places that you could post so art crit is the one that hmm let's see uh, so so notice that my text channels that there's a bunch of different channels and there should be one called art crit and that's the one you want to be in because I, I have added a couple of um, like reference photos and things like that. I've added a couple where it doesn't allow anyone to post anything. There should be like when you go on the um when you're on the right page you should see some kind of robot type uh like kind of these organic sci-fi robot type shapes like um drawings those are flux's drawings that he put up so let's see um but that's what you should see before you post all right, so regarding mine, like I said, um, I could still work on the mountains some more even. If I let it 100% dry, I could go in and do the mountains again. And I may do that because I, I might want it to be more crisp. Um, just to show you the reference photo. This is the page that you want to be on, by the way. This is this page. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, real quick, let's look at the reference photo. So notice how crisp everything is up here versus mine. So, and that's because it was too wet. So if I let it dry, first of all, it's going to dry a little crisper than it is right now. It will just when it's hundred percent dry. It's just not hundred percent dry yet. So I need to do that. But um, let's go ahead and look at teacher Margo's. All right. So let's see. Oh, here we go. Oh, very nice. Oh man. So you got really nice crisp mountains. Okay. So the number one thing, first of all, I love how crisp your mountains are like clearly and the fact that they recede really well into the background and your birds look pretty great too. They're nice and, and distant. Uh, yeah, it does look amazing. So one thing that I might do just to, um, it to, to like blend these areas here between like the dark and the light is you just take a little bit of water and just kind of do circular motions uh, around that area. And that's gonna actually loosen that up a little bit and it'll blend those two areas together. Same thing down here, but maybe let it be 100% dry cause you can actually um, reconstitute watercolor even on the paper too. So yeah, so that might like a little blending, but man, this looks really great, Margo. That's awesome. That's like frame worthy. I like that a lot. So good job. You get a B positive. B positive. Oh, you can't even see it because of my, my dumb discord thing. Sorry, but you, you gotta be positive for that. <laughs> 
Um, all right. So let me come back. Let me come back to you. Thank you so much. And thank you very much, Margo, for participating. I, I appreciate that, uh, that you did the painting with me today. So that is it for our stream today. I hope that everyone has a wonderful weekend. Um, I will be doing crochet on Tuesday, which is same time as today, but on Tuesday it's 2 p.m. Pacific time, which is 5 p.m. Eastern time. And um, I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Thank you very much. Uh, just a reminder, real quick before I go, let this completely dry, smush it between some books, and it will flatten out instead of being you know, wonky. Okay, thank you and have a good weekend.